feeling lost and alone, looking for validation from your partner only to find the feeling of rejection and continued frustration, you're together yet so far apart. Now your frustration has turned into disdain and resentment. Your insecurities have begun to affect every aspect of your life. Ironically, you have now become the cold and detached one, shielding yourself from the uncertainties of your relationships. Dr. April Brown has created Bringing Intimacy Back, a series of discussions that are designed to help you reclaim what you have lost along the way. Dr. April will help you rediscover and reconnect to the intimate relationship your heart so desires. Go to www.bringingintimacyback.com today and let the healing begin. Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show, where intimacy is real. On this show, we aim to help you increase the intimate connections between you, your significant other, children, family, God, higher power. We give you the secret power to intimacy to create a life you love or love the life you create. Well, on today's show, wow, we have something totally different today. Yes, our topic today is beauty and intimacy. And you're like, well, what does that have to do with intimacy? Beauty, intimacy? Yes. And I know a little bit, but I, of course, as always, I have to get experts who can come in and share with me about um, how beauty and intimacy and a lot of things different work. So today I have an expert here today. This His name is Jerome Infanto. Welcome, Jerome. Hello. <laughs> how, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, good, good. So Jerome has been in the beauty and salon industry for past 14 years. I mean, he knows his stuff. He is the founder of Blank Aesthetics in Florida here in Fort Myers. And it's like, um, how can I put it? It's like beauty that's in heaven. I mean, his facility is wonderful, very relaxing, and they work on all forms of beauty. His company specializes in last extensions, micro pigmentation, skin care, makeup. I mean, just look how gorgeous Drone is today in his makeup, okay? <laughs> Yes, yes, definitely. Um, he's also partnered with many medical professionals for many like invasive and non-invasive aesthetics procedure because all this is important. Throughout his many years of the field, he has heard, as we know, I call it like salon talks and people call it salon gossip from his clients as well as who are on all walks of life. And on the show, he's going to talk to us about how beauty correlates with intimacy. Um, we're going to talk about um, sex and insecurities. Um, Jerome is gay. He's also Filipino, which is fantastic American. Um, and he's worked extremely hard to develop. I mean, he's an entrepreneur. I mean, once you get to hear all of what he's done, it's, it's wonderful. Um, he's I, also in a relationship that's been about four years with his Danish boyfriend. So Jerome, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yes. yes, yes. So as I was just um, talking about what you do, can you share with our audience member the journey of how you even um, got into this field and became an entrepreneur and all that kind of information? So I grew up in a very Asian family and, uh, and uh, we're supposed to go to college. We're supposed to get our doctorate degrees and, and you know, have a really good, uh, academic job um, so you know I went to college like everybody else but I, I really have a passion for beauty and um, I, I'm also vain very vain myself and I wanted to like prevent pimples I wanted to like make sure I look great um, so I ended up going to aesthetic school and my mom finally agreed that I you know if it's your passion go ahead and do it and uh, and the way I got into the eyelashes, which is kind of like how I got started in the, in the industry, is, is, is literally we opened the first eyelash place in Fort Myers. And, um, oh, the first? Yes, yeah. we were the oh first. Oh my gosh, that, awesome. Because I, I was actually registering the company to, you know, to get our county licenses. And they're like, what are you guys doing? Like, lashes? Like, oh, that's the first. I, I think we're the first. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But, um there's something about the eyes and, and you know like like when you do lashes or not lashes um, your eyeshadow when you do your face it doesn't look finished without mascara 
So there's a secret to lashes that if you get them black and you get them nice, it just looks complete. And um, so when I went to the beauty convention, I saw this Asian lady doing extensions, and I was like, oh my god, this is this is this is a secret, you know. Cool. So I, I, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, cool, cool. So that's how you got started in the field. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and so um, I know you do other things besides um, eyelashes. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. Well, of course. So eyelashes was kind of the key that kind of got me around town. But, of course, uh, we specialize in skincare, too. And we have our own product lines and everything. But for me, skincare is mostly like it's what we do for ourselves and how we... See, the thing is, you can't just get a facial because, like, it's such a cookie cutter. You know, we, we mm -hmm. I want to be able to, like, see the skin, you know, look at the skin, see what it needs. Um, so it's not just, like, uh, something like, okay, go get this uh, microdermabrasion because not everybody needs a microdermabrasion. Okay. Um, yeah. But anyway, I get going on tangents. <laughs> I'm excited. That's okay. I'm following you. <laughs> I'm following you. Yes. <laughs> yes. So as a beauty expert, what's... Um, makes you stand out differently than your competitors? Well, for me is that I like freedom. And okay. the way when my, when my clients come in, we, we connect. And it's a very intimate moment because it's, it, there's such a close proximity and I'm touching them very intimately in, in their eyes and their faces when we do makeup, you know, we, you're able to connect and uh, I like that. And I give them the experience, not saying like, you know, it's a, it's a show, but I, I feel like you become friends with them because it's such an intimate moment whenever you have that, you know, one hour that I allocate for each and every one of them. So. Yes, I would um, definitely agree. I've gone to um, a variety of different um, people to do my lashes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and when I was, um, and when I've gone with you, yes, it has been, as you put it, an experience. Yes, because you're really good at being very, um, one of the things we're talking as we um, open up and talk more about in this show, you're very authentic. And so with that authenticity and then a passion about your feel, yeah, it shows off in the work that you do. So of course, yes, I do feel like it's a very intimate experience when you visit um, your shop, Link. Yes. Well, I, I, can I add something to it? it? So I'm actually wearing tank tops right now because I wanted to, just, I'm in, I'm actually currently at the, the salon and I'm wearing my tank tops and I want to be able to show people that you can come in here in your pajamas. You can, you can feel comfortable. You can have any form of language. We can talk about anything you want in, in this place. I, it's that kind of freedom that I like. Yeah. You know? And so, um, just like you said, the freedom and the language, did you expect, because um, one of the reasons why we started this is because you and I were talking and then you were sharing how some of your customers tell you a lot of stuff. So yes. did you expect that as you were going, you know, starting this, you know, I'm going to hear so much intimate conversations with people. Was that an <laughs> expectation? I mean, did, <laughs> were you prepared for that? Actually, it wasn't really, I wasn't expecting it, but I know, but I know that being gay it brings a lot about uh, a lot of comfort to women. So when I see a lot of women, they get really comfortable because, you know, not only you're in intimate, uh, uh, like the proximity with the clients, you're also they're also comfortable with you because it's you're gay and you're you're kind of friends with them. You're kind of naturally innate to be friends with women. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear a lot of juicy things. So I, I cannot wait to share a lot of the, these. Um, stories <laughs> okay as you know the show is about um intimacy and today's topic is beauty and intimacy before we get into the meat and bones can you describe or tell me what your definition is of beauty and what is your definition of intimacy um so beauty is what we perceive as beautiful of course you know I, we all consider humanity as beautiful, and, and that's like a general statement, I would say. Um, but beauty is what we see is this, as, a, and as an aesthetic person. Um, beauty is literally what the media and what the whole world kind of identifies as beautiful. Because 
I'm not going to make money into making somebody look crazy avant-garde and, and, you know, drag queen lashes. Everybody wants a standard kind of beauty. And, and as a professional, I have to be able to imitate what, you know, the world sees as beautiful and translate it into a, a physical art somehow. Um, for me, intimacy is what happens after beauty. Mm-hmm. It's the connection we make after seeing what's beautiful. Um, whether it's the personality or, you know, physical, that, that's what I, I feel like intimacy means to me. Wow, I never thought about it. It's the connection after we see um, the beauty. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great, <laughs> Jane. <laughs> yeah, and so you um, continue to use this word vain. What does vain mean to Jerome? Vain so, yes. Is, oh, my goodness. Vain is, uh, is someone who really... It's a noun for me. <laughs> it's an adjective. It's not an adjective. It's a noun that someone who is is just very cautious and very uh, uh, very selfish in a way where it's kind of a good thing because you're taking care of yourself. Um, mm-hmm. um, who's addicted to glamour? Who's I don't know. That that's vain for me. I, I okay. it's it's a positive word. It's a positive. Okay. Word. Good. 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 Yeah. I look at it as um, pampering yourself. Yes. Because many yes. people, um, how can I say, they take care of everybody else, but they forget to about themselves. Yes. And so what you're saying, yeah, is that you really do a good job taking care of yourself and also helping other people take care of them. Yeah. I mean, I cannot give beauty advice if I if my skin is bad or if my eyebrows are horrible. I can't say somebody needs like microblading if they're you know if I'm jacked up. You know? <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's really um, good that, that you take your product seriously. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. It's a necessity if you're in the industry. I would say. Yes. You have yes. to be. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. And do you feel like, um, cause I know that you've been in a long-term relationship. Um, do you feel like that beauty and intimacy affects your relationship also? Oh, yeah, of course. So if anyone has, I mean, I invited a lot of my, my clients to, to listen to this, so they know. Uh, but for those who don't know, I'm Asian. I have very brown skin. Um, uh, I have dark hair. I have almondy eyes and my boyfriend is is white i would say he's pink (laughs) he's a ginger he's very muscular and i'm really skinny so we have we're totally opposites right and um and the way like it affects our relationship is the is that i i'm attracted to whatever the opposite of me is and um, of course, I, I did give him a makeover. So he's he's very blonde. His eyebrows are blonde and it's so invisible. So I taught him how to tint it. So now he has really good, strong predator eyebrows. Mm-hmm. And uh, I taught him how to grow his beard. So it's, it kind of like, you know, contours his face. So it, okay. A lot of that stuff, uh, um, you know, for me, opposites attract. And, yes. and so... It's um oh my god I'm getting lost in the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. But um good good yeah I know that you are Filipino um and sometimes when people are culturally different they feel um that they don't fit in. Yes. It, no of course growing up it, it was insane you know I was the only Asian kid in, in in elementary school and I hated my skin I hated my eye shape. I was like, I want to be like everybody else and keep coral. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's very hard to love yourself when you've, you know, been raised in a place where you're, you're different. Um, so that's like another, I had really so low self-esteem and all that stuff to growing up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how now, oh, how did you even change that low self-esteem to um, a person now who is vain, like you said? <laughs> how, how did that change happen? Actually, when I started traveling, I went to Asia and I saw that there's people who look like me. The magazines there look like me. Like the people look like me, and I felt like, oh my god, like there's so much more in this world than our backyards locally. 
that, right. you know, the moment we see that, like, there's people who check you out and, and you know, let's just say in Denmark, I'm a big seller in Denmark. Oh my God, I get hit on there all the time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes, um, yes, yeah. And I do think, like you said, um, when you travel and you get to see other countries and you um, actually for all those um, people out there listening who have maybe low self-esteem, when you're able to see people that look like you and that are successful and stuff, it does impact you and make yeah. you realize that, you know, beauty comes in all shapes and sizes and all colors of skin and a variety of different aspects. Yes. Yes, yes, definitely. Well, we're going to take a short little break, but when we come back, we're going to go and talk about the meat and bones of this topic of beauty and intimacy. We'll take a short break right now um, and hear a commercial from Vacation Counseling. Are you wanting a vacation in paradise? A vacation to rekindle the passion? A vacation without the kids? A vacation where you can learn how to communicate, where you and your partner hear each other and gain insight. Vacation counseling is your next vacation. Stay in one of our exclusive villas for the ultimate couples retreat. Enjoy dining, boating, and all that South Florida has to offer. Let our counselors guide you through the rest. Vacation counseling, accepting applications for summer 2020. Visit www.vacationcounseling.com for more information. Welcome back to Bringing Intimacy Back, where intimacy is real. And on today's topic, we're talking about beauty and intimacy with one of the um, local and famous, uh, Jerome Infanto. He is the founder of Blanket Statics, which is actually, which I learned, was the first, um, first business slash store, I guess, that does um, eyelashes and they do so much more and with skin and stuff. And so um, one of the things that I wanna talk about um, as we start this thing about um, beauty and intimacy is because I, I feel, especially with intimacy, you've gotta feel comfortable with yourself first. Mm -hmm. So um, as beauty changes people and people become more confident, do, do you think beauty and confidence kinda have a relationship or? Oh yeah, of course. Um, so, so what I do f most of the time is eyelashes. And so okay. um, it's kind of like, not a mask, but it's almost like a, it changes people. You know, when, right. when you look from being sleepy to getting these really nice voluminous lashes and looking so awake, you, you gain, of course, that confidence. Um, but I, yes, I could kind of, it's similar to a mask. And when you wear a mask, you become a different person. You, right. you kind of, you, you act a lot more different. The, the, the most wonderful story is that I actually had a client and she, she was, um, she came in and she was, she was sad. And I was, she was talking to me and she was telling me like, oh my God, like I, my husband hasn't touched me in a lot, a long time. And I'm like, you know, of course I'm listening. I can't right. really say anything. Um, and um, so after that, I did her lashes. Um, I'm having dinner um, really late. And then around 10 o'clock, she calls me and she's like, oh, my God, thank you so much. I, I, you changed my life. Like, you know, I finally had sex with my husband. And I, and I was just like, okay, it was a really weird <laughs> phone call, but thank you. Um, I really didn't think it was the eyelashes. I, I thought it was just because she felt confident. She, she mm -hmm. might have maybe dressed a little sexier that night, or maybe she, she saw that, okay, well, I can actually look great, so let me put the makeup on. I, I think that's what happened. Right. But it, it's like one of these things where it makes me feel like, oh, I'm really happy about my profession because I can feel like I'm helping people, even though I'm not a therapist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but um, in a sense, many people I, um, talk to you about their problems. I think... Um, if people are having relationship issues, especially as females, they will tell their salon person before they tell their therapist. Oh yeah, I think that's very common. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I always hear like the craziest stories about you know affairs, uh, you know the wives having affairs with their husband. I, I was even used as a as a decoy as an alibi. She's like, if my husband calls the salon, tell her I'm still getting a facial, even though she's on a date. It's it's. <laughs> I hear juicy things. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Yeah, so you hear a lot of crazy crazy stories. Oh yeah. 
Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so in those stories, um, what do you feel like your role is when you're hearing all this, this stuff? I'm basically a listener. Okay. I, I mean, that's the only thing you can say, really. I mean, unless you're a licensed therapist, right, then right, you can, right. of course, give advice and then they'll, you know. Um, yeah, and technically we don't give advice. We listen yes. also. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to name any, if, if I've ever, like, I think my clients are listening to me right now, but if I don't want to name anybody, but um, I might end up, you know, saying something that's kind of related to them, so they'll probably te text me later, like, hey, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So I know um, at one point you talked about earlier about the eyes and um, and you, your feelings about eyelashes extensions. So do you yes. For, yes, yes. So tell me how um, how does the eyes? Because like you said, the, you did someone's eye extension and for some reason she got confident, or yes. her husband was able to see her more. Yeah, how does that okay. work? Well, number one, not to dish on. Um, the nail people, like the first thing that people see is your eyes, you know, yes. like, you know, don't spend like crazy amounts of money doing your nails when it's the first thing people see are the eyes. And it's exactly. the windows. It's the windows to your soul. That's what they mm. say. And eyelashes are the window frames. So mm. you can either look cheap, like wow. a cheap window or like an expensive window. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, so it really does make a major difference um and, and and a lot of people have this myth about extensions that they think that it's going to damage your lashes it really depends on the artist if the artist is very careful they watch for you know any signs of early damage we can switch to a lighter material or you know a better glue it's it really is so i just want to like dispel all these crazy myths about it okay okay and um just because we're talking about that i know some people think well um I should just go and buy those um, fake eyelashes thing and put them on. What's the difference between doing that and doing and getting the um, extensions? Well, it's all about prep time. When you have extensions, you can just wake up, go to Walmart, and be happy. You know, but right. with when you know, with the strips, you have to glue them and you make sure that it's precise. And then ten minutes later, it's gonna start lifting, and then you're like, oh my goodness. Um, it's always get. It's good to get a. Um, um, you know, extensions, I would say. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I know you do more than extensions. You also do help with um, makeup. Yes. Yes. Um, I used to cross-dress back when I was, you know, single and crazy. And it's, it's not because I wanted to be different. It's because I bought so much makeup that I... I didn't know what to do with them. Like, okay, let me try it on. I bought this palette and I have no girlfriends to put them on. So I put it myself. And, um, and I just, I just love, I love the fact that like I can change somebody from okay. an ordinary to extraordinary. Um, and it, it's that power. You know, the, it, I don't know if you've seen the YouTube power of makeup where they turn like normal people into like supermodels oh, wow. with okay. the makeup. And that's the, that, that's the, that's what I'm saying. It's the strength. It's the, that's the correlation between beauty and intimacy. When, when the transformation and the change, mm -hmm. not just physically, but also in the inside, you know, the confidence it can give and, you know, like just knowing that you have a potential to look amazing, you know, with the hands of a great artist. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm sitting here, if I'm sitting there thinking, or some of my listeners are thinking, um, I'm a man and I'm hearing all this and I want to try it out. Do I have to be gay to try out makeup or eyelash no, extension? I don't know if anyone can see me because I know we're also on Facebook, but I don't have any makeup on except for a little concealer just because I right. slept really late last night. Um, I just have perfect skin. But <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, he does. But, but there's a thing called concealers that a lot of men don't realize that you only need a tiny bat and you know you just put them under a little bit under the eyes and it just makes a huge difference um and then you know missing brows and and then there was a there was an article that i read a while ago and it's something to do with the attractiveness of men and mm -hmm. there's men with weak eyebrows and there's right. men with strong eyebrows and a lot of times women prefer men with stronger eyebrows so there's a lot of things that men can do 
to change the way their eyebrows are. We can color them in darker. We can, you know, some there's some uh, permanent makeup solutions that doesn't look too feminine. You know, there's a lot of ways that they could. Uh, help. Okay, great, great. So at your salon, you you see a lot of or some men that come in and, and get these type of services. Oh yes. yes. Okay, great. We get, we get really manly men that come in here. So. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Good, good, good. I'm going back a little bit to skincare because you do have beautiful skin. Thank you so much. Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, what kind of services do you guys provide? Um, well, we have a hydrofacial machine that we like to just use when the person really needs it. We have a microdermabrasion machine. We have, I mean, we have micro needling, which is literally like uh, usually a 64 needle that punctures the skin and helps with scarring people with right. severe, you know, pigmentation and evenness of texture. Um, but we, I, we also have a doctor, we partner with two doctors, uh, Dr. James Michael Smith and Dr. Allison Yee. I love them both. They do amazing fillers and non-invasive, uh, you know, bose hawks. Um, if people can see my, my forehead, it's barely moving because it works. <laughs> Oh, okay. You have Botox on it. Okay. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So with all these beauty stuff, do you think, um, does that impact your, your relationship? So let's talk a little bit more about relationships. Do you think looks okay. impact relationships? Yes. So, okay. So in my experience, I was really skinny, you know, all throughout when I was single. I was even anorexically looking. And, and then I met my boyfriend. And then years later, you get comfortable, you gain 20 pounds. And, you know, I noticed that I was like not going out. I wasn't drinking. My boyfriend was like, let's go downtown. And I'm like, no, I really want to. Because I wasn't confident about myself. And I feel like that changes, you know, my energy. The, 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 I'm not even motivated to show myself in public. And it affected my relationship because I, I was more insecure. I was more jealous. Right. And so... The more I, no, I'm on keto, by the way, and I lost about 17 pounds. It's an amazing diet. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Awesome. How yeah, long have you been yeah. on keto? Um, it's been about a month, but it helped me lose the weight. And then, you know. You lost 17 um, in a month? Um, a month and a, I think I've been on it about a month and a half now, actually. Month, okay, I, I, started it, I went to Ireland and I, I, of course, was doing my diet there and I was, I was getting my confidence back and I was, we did. Uh, so much so much activities that I wouldn't have when I was you know overweight or not overweight but you know wasn't confident about myself okay. and so so beauty when you when you're not feeling beautiful of course it, it, you get more insecure you get jealous like who are you checking out you know why right. so I, from personal experience yes I totally 100% agree that beauty is affects so much relationships yeah and you just talked about um jealousy and yeah. so um, I know in my own field, a lot of times when um, jealousy enters into relationships, many times it's because there's some in insecurities going on. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So would you and say it, this? Yeah. yeah, would you say the same thing in the sense of um, the more, in the sense of confidence and jealousy, how, how those two kind of relate? Um, so I just had a client like two hours ago and she, she was raised in, you know, a very poor family and she didn't grow up with, with the, a good self-esteem basically. And, um, she's always kind of had to dump the boyfriend before her boyfriend dumps her because of that kind of like, and she was always jealous. Um, and then recently she was telling me about a new guy that kept that kept on telling her oh my god you're so beautiful you're really beautiful like i get you know i'm like it really boosted her up the fact that she got into a really good relationship and it it made her of course happy and you know less jealous and i feel like sometimes it's not even a beauty treatment that you need to, to get the, you know <laughs> confidence it's it's really maybe the right person you know so it, it, it's, yeah, horrible feeling jealousy. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and then I, so I was just thinking, um, because you you make people, you do a whole transformation of people. Oh, yeah. And so, yes, yes. So for someone who may um, 
have had no one hit on them or whatever. They're quiet, they're mute, and you like do the makeup and all that and just work with their skin. And now all of a sudden, they're like, um, I don't know, this big flower that's just blossom into such beauty and all the different, um, in my head now I have beads. <laughs> all these different <laughs> little things, beads are coming like, oh my gosh, I want some of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you um, prepare your clients for like, oh my gosh, for all the well, attraction we, they're going to get? We have a joke. Um, because we always kind of, when you say eyelashes, we always think of strippers and, and you know. And so we have a joke that it kind of people sometimes have mistaken that it's like offensive, but we always tell my clients as a joke that, oh, don't get pregnant tonight. Just because you, your, your lashes are freshly done, you know. And it looks like, um, you know, it looks sluttier, you know, like, the, you know, the, and um, we, we, yeah, we, we always make that joke just because, like, who doesn't get confidence when they have something, when you get your hair done, you know, don't you feel like you should go out to dinner, like, afterwards, right. because yes. it's amazing. Yes. And, um, yeah, it goes back to what you were asking me. Of course, yes. <laughs> I warn people, don't get pregnant tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're almost time for another commercial. And um, when we get back, we'll talk a little, much more about relationships. So, Jerome, I would like for you on this commercial to tell us a little bit about um, your shop, where people can get information, and your social media, and the services that you guys provide. It's all on you. Go ahead. Oh, cool, cool. Well, we are on, in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, the name is Blink Aesthetics, and you can follow us on Instagram at Blink Aesthetics with an A E L, you know, Blink Aesthetics. Um, you can also visit our website at www.blinkflorida.com. Um, we have amazing, amazing work. We have artists that are very passionate. Uh, we love what we do. We'll take care of anybody that feels like, even prices, God, tell me anything and I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a skincare line and eyelash line that you can look at on our Instagram. Um, um, one of the things if, if people can see later is that I actually don't have a lot of hair in my, my head and um, we do micropigmentation on the scalp. It makes it look like you have a good, good hairline. Um, oh, awesome. A lot of people don't know that. So, and of course, eyelash extensions. We are the premier place to get it down in, you know, Southwest Florida. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. And I also think um, you teach, right? I'll help people. Yes. yes. We, we certify people um, into getting it um, an eyelash uh, extension certification. And if they don't have a Florida license, we partner with two different schools to get them uh, a Florida state license for aesthetics, um, you know, refer them to, to them. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much for letting us know what you do and stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Um, since you mentioned the micropigmentation, so what you're saying is um, when you're a little ball, like for yeah. men, maybe. For I mean, for men females women. Too. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That you help produce um, uh, what? Pigmentation? Pigmentation. So it looks like it's little follicles that like look like hair. Um, I had a lady, she's black, and she's done a lot of braids all her life. And she, it just kind of like tore her scalp over here. And I, we've been pigmenting it with like little dot, micro dots. And it just looks so good now that she can uh, leave her hair normal doesn't have to cover it with anything right awesome it's, it's great with you know the hairline the crown area um if people had surgeries like facelifts where they have scars that you want us to cover up so you can it, it's easy okay yeah so it's also like you said for those who have um scars and things that have happened for surgery yeah yeah, yeah, that you help with that, which is great. Yes. So um, I know you're in a long distance type of relationship. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, how does that work? It, you know, back in the day, people used to write letters and they would wait months for the letters to come. And, you know, it, and it was like always doomed. People say, 
long distance relationships are doomed, but not in 2020. We have FaceTime, we have, you know, sex toys that are remote controlled. I mean, <laughs> there's so many <laughs> things that people could do, could be creative. There's even apps that um, you can leave them drop messages and track them where they are, like GPS and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's very much easier now to form a long distance relationship. Now, unfortunately, the corona, my boyfriend's supposed to be here in two, two and a half weeks, but you know, I guess we'll be banned all the borders. <laughs> yes, yes, I yes. We heard that I'm last crying. night. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's something with all those health issues going on, um, how yeah. it's affecting everyone. And yeah, and how, um, as we're talking about intimacy, which is closeness, um, yes. because of health issues now, people have to be a little um, yeah, more no, distant. No more, no more hugs. <laughs> but just to let you know we're very sterile here we have overstocked on uh, antiviral wipes (laughs) okay good 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 Uh, yes yes and that's very good yes yes so with the relationship um going back to your relationship um you guys see each other pretty often and you're saying with distance relationship because we have so many different types of communication techniques yes then and you can be one, successful. I, I'm just I'm just fortunate enough to have met somebody who's financially independent, and I'm also comfortable with my own money that I could travel and see him. And we've actually been to so many countries together, and it's always like a honeymoon when we see each other. Right. And and a lot of my friends would say, "Oh, wait till you live together; you're not going to survive." I mean, we it's like okay, then time will tell. But I, We've been together like on the longer periods of time, which is a, I would say three weeks, is the longest. And we, you know, we, we just do normal things at home. You know, we mm-hmm. go to Lowe's, we go to Walmart, or Publix together, we go to Target. Okay. <laughs> but I do feel like it's such a strong relationship because of that need and want to be with each other. Because of right. The right. But also, I think this one, one of the things that you um, kind of just briefly mention but it's so important is that um you are you and he it's the same way in the sense that you guys are confident in yourselves yeah well him more than me he's more confident <laughs> he's i would say he's narcissistic i'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. but i mean Jerome, you're very confident with yourself you know yourself and you yes 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 and you feel beauty and yeah and you feel sexy um and being confident and um helps in a relationship because you don't come off as needy i think when when people are too needy yeah it impacts relationships oh yeah like i i remember when i was single i would always all the clingy guys i would be like oh, i'm kind of feeling you know you always like we always like the chase and i think it's and it's part of the human um it's part of like the human the human uh what do you call it, characteristics is to always want what we can't have and so we always like the chase. Um, but if your partner is confident and you feel like, okay, I still have to be in my game to keep my boyfriend or, you know, it keeps it exciting. Um, and the fact that it's attractive to have somebody who, who takes care of yourself, who, who is still, you know, on the A game when it comes to pleasing you or making you feel like, okay, I want him to be proud of me all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so um, the other aspect that is making your relationship very healthy is that um, you guys have a little bit of distance. And so you're able to do things, come together, share what you do. You know what I'm yes. saying? It's not always you're on, um, on top of one another or expect him to fulfill all your needs. Yeah, and, and a lot of times people say, you know that it's it's hard for long but it takes a lot of trust when you're doing a long distance it's a lot of trust because he's four thousand miles away six hour difference half the time i'm sleeping when he's awake and half the time i'm you know um so there it requires a lot of trust and and what's awesome is if you're like i said you know you're confident and you feel beautiful you don't get that like, oh my God, is, are you looking for other people or where did you go, you know, when, when I was right. sleeping? So. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. Yes, yes. And um, 
because I know you mentioned earlier about um, we have all these different instruments to communicate and um, I guess even to track people. But yes. does, that ha does that really work in tracking people in, in your relationship and tracking your partner? Um, I actually don't use, so we have a GPS thing, because, but it's not because I want to stalk him. It, right. It's uh, just because that's so I know that it, when he's home, so okay. I can call him or, or just to make sure he's safe. Um, okay. It's that kind of like, okay, I know you're home. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Okay, good. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> that's okay. That's <laughs> okay, so um, it sounds like a very healthy relationship. And so I'm assuming you hear a lot of stories about relationships, and, and you probably hear some of the healthy ones and some of the unhealthy ones. Can yeah. you tell me three signs that – that through all these years of experience um, in the beauty salon and this stuff in the sense of um, listening to women and um, just people in general talk about relationships. What are three signs of a healthy relationship and three signs of an unhealthy relationship? Okay, so it, since it's in the salon setting, number one would probably be the sex life. If I don't hear stories about his penis or, um, you know, sex i feel like it's not a strong relationship you should be proud of your partner i mean you know what i mean like especially to, to someone you're bragging to you know right. like so that's number one and then um for something healthy if it's right. if, if it's healthy then i i hear a lot about sex um uh, then i hear a lot about uh, Financial bragging, you know, like, oh, my husband bought me a new, you know, a, a new yacht or a new Rolex. <laughs> a lot of my clients are super wealthy and they know if they're listening, they know who they are because I asked them to listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the third sign of a happy relationship um, is, is the, the general happiness. They come in there with no problems. They're happy, and they, and they, and, and they know when they're happy because they always just, um, they're not. They don't talk about themselves a lot. They always be like, "Oh my God, so what about you?" Because it's right. rarely that people ask about me, just because I'm just there to listen most of the time. I mean, it's, and when I when I do a client, it's all about them. It's their time. It's their hour. Um, so when they when I hear something like, "What about what about you?" I I love that because I feel like okay you know, they're really content. So they don't need to complain. <laughs> <laughs> and what about three signs of unhealthy? So, uh, well, them cheating, number one, is if they have affairs and um, I have to be their alibi. Um, right. Right, exactly. <laughs> number two would be um, when I see them and they're not, dressed up or they they look like a schmuck <laughs> right 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 it's it's just that it's like oh my god i'm trying to help you look beautiful why aren't you helping me help you you know right um and then number three of an unhealthy relationship would be them crying in my bed of course um right right, right. do you get you know, the ones like, who um sometimes come to you and maybe they've had a black eye or something that mm -hmm. has to be covered up oh uh, yeah but they always lie about it i mean unless they're really close to me right and it's unfortunate that, you know like you can't get that bruise with falling it's impossible to get the bruise with falling. <laughs> yes. yes yes yeah so, yes yes yeah it's, yeah so it's good that they are able to open up to you yeah that kind of stuff yes 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 okay well, we're going to take a short little break and and i and when we come back we're going to um have you tell us some tips on how to increase our beauty intimacy. Okay, so on our short break today, what I wanna talk about is we have a new sponsor, Adam and Eve, and I don't know if you guys have ever gone to Adam and Eve, but it's a great store online that has a lot of different toys and a variety of different things you can do. But you can get almost, um, we have a contract with them that for one item, you can get 50% off if you use the code BIB. And Adam and Eve has a lot of stuff, a lot of free stuff on there. For more information about Adam and Eve and um, what, what they do, go to www.adamandeve.com 
And also you can find more information about them on my um, website of bringing intimacy back. Well, welcome back. We're back on this show. We're back talking about beauty and intimacy. We're, and we're on the show where intimacy is real. And so can you, Jerome, give us some tips on how can we can increase our beauty intimacy? Okay, it's a, it's a very loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> you like um, loaded things, don't you? <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. Keep them coming. Um, okay, yes. So, of course, anything to do with physical changes will definitely help with, with beauty intimacy. I would say that's number one. So, I would say... Contact your nearest beauty professional that you trust, not just some random stranger. I mean, like a hairdresser that you know that's really good and just be like, you know what, can you evaluate, you know, what I need and don't sell me anything. Just tell me what you think I need, you know, physically. Um, and, you know, having a healthy lifestyle, you know, like I started doing low carbs and it, it just changed me and changed my body. And, and, and so whether it's not just superficial things, you know, it could be something like, you know, have a healthy diet and it'll change you physically or, you know, of course, do something to do if you have bald spots or, you know, need more lashes or um, I got my lips done and it really helped me, you know. And, you know, the reason why I started getting all these Botox and fillers like these, I wanted to show people that you could still look natural. You right, know? right, because it all so looks natural. Scared. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be yeah, scared. Yeah, we never know. You know. Yes. I've had seven syringes of fillers on my face right now, and it doesn't really? look like. Yeah, I don't look like a, an alien. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, no, right? your lips, then, look, no, your lips look natural. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'd say number one is physical. Ask somebody that you trust to see. Okay, what other improvements I can do for myself. Okay. Um, and then number number two, oh my God, I think number one answer a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not really about physical, too. it's about self, you know, it's about self-help. So I would say number two is you're mentally confident, you know, that you appreciate the things that happen to you. Like, like yes, I got my lashes done, but why am I still sad? Then appreciate the fact that you have really long lashes. Appreciate your inner beauty. Appreciate your your original beauty, not the extensions that you got, you know, um, like more like an appreciation. I think that would, would help with a lot of intimacy. And one thing I remembered was when I was gaining weight also, I would start having sex with my tank top on because I was like, I don't want to take my shirt off. Um, right. And so now, I, of course, I'm really comfortable taking my shirt off when, while having sex. So it, 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 those are like the, the, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like so many things over my head. Uh, <laughs> about uh, the in, intimate moments in my life that I was insecure of. Um, so physically, mentally, um, so of course make changes or, or start identifying, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, I don't know, so, maybe that's yeah. probably the, the, kind main, of the main things that you, okay. I'm curious, um, because you do have such a strong presence, um, a lot of people, there. do you watch a certain um, thing on YouTube or, or um, how do you, how have you gotten that mindset of like, hey, well, I'm a millennial. I think we're born like this. <laughs> we're very entitled people. And <laughs> no, I actually, I follow so many people on YouTube, like Jeffree Star. Uh, so Jeffree Star is this, he's not trans. He's, he's, he's just himself. He's very okay. confident. Uh, he's a makeup blogger. I like the drama that happens in his life. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I follow Nikita Dragon. She's a trans um uh, makeup uh, person also mm -hmm. but I also think that it's it's the point when you not that I know I'm beautiful it's just I've accepted it I've accepted the fact that hey you know I, I'm Asian I have tattoos I have piercings I'm gay um, you know 
all my imperfections I that I thought were imperfections, I just kind of like thought to myself, like, you know what, they helped me mold me into my personality, you know. Okay. And I think that kind of helped me with, with myself too. And of course all the Botox and the fillers in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think one of the things you just said is acceptance is, is key because some people, many people even struggle with accepting the color of their skin yeah. or, yeah, or their sexual preference or, yeah, just a variety of yeah. things. Yeah, in, in, in today's world, you know, we're very race sensitive, we're very politically correct, um, and it kind of is some sort of a barrier nowadays to, to having sort of a an acceptance, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've never felt I was Asian until like, you know, until like this times where I feel like, okay, I guess I'm Asian. I just thought I was part of, I was an American, you know? <laughs> okay. So you didn't feel until you. It was just lately, you know, with the, with the tension in the politics. I just oh, feel like, okay, yes, yes. I, I feel like, you know, it's much more about race nowadays. Right. And, um, so it, it might affect people's confidence, I would say, into, you know, accepting who they are because it's, we're so divided. So. Yes, yes. And, and um, sometimes you think it's getting better, but then sometimes it's just, it still struggles. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. But one of the things that I think um, you mentioned earlier, which is really, great it's to travel and to be around different people yes i mean that helps tremendously to be around oh people that are different than you yeah and, and you know as as americans we like to say hey how are you and it's, it's such a greeting you know and then so we were um God, i forgot where we were but we were out there somewhere in europe and some some guy asked me how i how are you and i said i'm good and i just kind of ignored it and each stayed looking at me like, no, how are you? And I'm like, oh, I didn't know you really wanted to know how I <laughs> And such a, a new thing, it made me feel like, okay, there's still people who are interested, you know, without selling you anything. They don't want to, right. they just want to talk to you genuinely. And um, it, like I said, meeting new people kind of creates a better mindset, uh, new cultures, new food, um, you know. So it's, it's very good to travel. Right, definitely. And I do think it also, when we talk about beauty, expands our mind on what beauty is and on, di and on doing different things and trying different things. Yes. Um, I was like drawing black, but I was going to say something for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. I drank a lot of coffee just so I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, but so, and that we're um, about to wrap up. Um, is there anything that you want to share with our audience that I haven't asked or talked about? Um, we've talked about, I think we've talked about most everything, but I, I don't know what I, what I want to add. I did make a list, so. Okay. Okay. And the one thing you guys may not know about Jerome is that he is, um, besides very beautiful, <laughs> Jerome is very, um, very intelligent. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> so he's a scholar, so he has his little list there. So yes. <laughs> so I, I forgot to, so in every, in every situation, there's a solution. Yes. So don't feel like there's no hope. Like, oh, I am, you know, I'm ugly or my skin's never going to heal. There's always different modalities. And, mm. and a lot of times, you know, we um, invent new things within the decade that's, you know, not in the news. Like, like a lot of people don't, rem don't think that, you know, like you can actually smooth out a really, really actually scarring skin with right. like some, you know, micro needles. There's so much modalities out there. So don't feel like you've, you've lost hope into uh you know fixing or finding solutions about things um that's one thing i forgot to tell um people that there's always a solution okay um when it comes to you know physically altering yourself right 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 definitely <laughs> yes yeah. yeah and i would um probably even in, in my own life um the whole skincare is 
extremely important. Yeah. Because um, I know some of us, including myself, I will be honest in that aspect. Um, we think about putting makeup on and all this other stuff, but we don't really think about the skin care, the, the skin yes. underneath. Yes. Um, and it's also liver health. Whatever your liver is, is what your skin is. So make sure you have great insides to show what's on the outside. Um, oh my God, I keep throwing black. So just, just thinking about something amazing and then like, oh my God, I just got <laughs> okay. So what you're, just, what you're saying, um, which is very important, is um, we have to be careful and be um, very cognitive of what we eat and what we drink. Yes. And because most that of the affects time, our liver. Yes. And skin. And most, yep, yep, yep. And most of the time, we always like to dig in, you know, to get new skin. But it's really from what's inside that will come out once we dig in there. Um, mm -hmm. Like serums and stuff like that. It's, you know, you, we waste so much money on putting serums. Because it's not, so your skin really protects your body. So if you put a serum in there, it's really not 100% going to go in there. Um, so it's literally what we put inside. And if we actually, like I said, microneedling is a procedure where you, you're using micro needles going about a millimeter deep it pushes more products in so unless you're doing that you're wasting your serums you know um so those are the things um toner is important a lot of times people skip toner after you after you wash your face they just you know skip it to the moisturizer right. but toner is amazing it closes your pores rehydrates your skin and then you use a moisturizer to seal it so, the, so that's another thing people forget to mix in their you know skincare regimen yeah so as i'm listening to all these um tips do you by any chance um if someone is thinking they're listening and they're like wow um i would like to connect with jerome and maybe get some tips or ideas or suggestions where can they reach you so i operate mostly on instagram now just because everybody okay. just dms people so okay if you have an Instagram, follow me. At Blink, and I'm personally the one, I don't hire people to talk for me. I personally will text you back and give you anything that I have in my head. Um, or you can also call us at 239, area code 850-4976. Okay. And your inst oh, go oh, ahead. No. Say no, no, your no. phone number again. It's 239-850-4976. Okay. And your Instagram? My Instagram is Blink Aesthetics. Blink Aesthetics. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you. Yes. Yes. Please look him up. Please check out his um, website because you do have a website at www.blinkflorida.com. Yep. Yes. Jerome, we love having you and we welcome you back on the show anytime. Thank you this so has much. Been, this has been the Bringing Intimacy Back show where intimacy is real. See you guys next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.